Hi, Mitch here at the Bloodshed. Sorry for the echoey nature of this video, but we're shooting this inside the man cave part of the man cavern that we call the Bloodshed. And it is echoey because of the tile floor, but I can close the door and keep out of all the hammering and grinding and screaming crime and rock and roll music. This video is going to take a deeper look at the inside of the original Zombie 222 battery and the new Zombie 222 battery that we're building uh, to unveil at the Texas Mile April 1st. So the old battery that's been used to sell the world records and get us a lot of you know, street creds for the amazing performance of the Zombie 222, and then the new battery that we're going to hopefully use to even go to higher uh, speeds and records. Let's start by talking about the words power and energy. So when you think about batteries and even the individual cells using batteries, it's important to keep those two things distinct in your mind. Energy is often used to talk about measurements like kilowatt hours or amp hours of a cell. And most people think in terms of things like range on an EV. So your kilowatt hours is a good way to, to kind of have a grasp of, you know, what could the range of a car at a particular weight and the way it's being driven be? So when you look at a Tesla and you hear about a P80, that's an 80 kilowatt hour version. There's a P90, it's a 90 kilowatt hour version. So if the two cars were driven equally and had the same weights, the 90 kilowatt hour version would have greater range than the 80, okay? That's your energy. Power, is it, a good way to think about power, particularly what we do, is discharge. You know, how much power can this battery produce in the forms of propulsion or lifting or whatever the task is at hand that the battery has to do. In our world, of course, it's propulsion. Since there are energy concerns when you're building an EV and power concerns when you're building an EV, cells are also categorized in uh, energy and power terms. So the cells that a Tesla uses, for example, are typically thought of as energy cells. Uh, the cells that Derek uses are considered ultra high power. So you have ultra high power, power, and then energy cells. So these are ultra high power cells. And then the cells that we're going to be using in the, the new battery are just power cells. We're going to use more of them. So configuration of the cells is also part of the recipe for finding out what you can and can't do with a particular battery in a particular application. Let's start by taking a look at all the characteristics of these original cells that were used in the Zombie 222 battery. We're going to look at voltage, amp hour, and then its discharge capabilities, often referred to as its C ratings. There's a continuous and a 10 second. These cells are 3.7 volt cells. This cell is a 5 amp hour, that's its capacity of energy cell, and it has a C rating or a discharge rating of 125 amps continuously, meaning it's safe to pull 125 amps out of this one cell continuously till the cell has been depleted to its safe low levels. It has a 10 second discharge, which is important for racing, of 300 amps. That's why it's considered an ultra high uh, power cell. It's very small, very thin, and this thing can, can literally allow you to pull out 300 amps for 10 seconds without damaging it. The cells that we're going to use here that are in this module already, these are a different chemistry. They're both in the lithium family. This is more of a lithium ion cell. It's an A123 26650 cell, uh, often referred to by them as a uh, nanophosphate cell. This is a cylindrical cell. You can see the, the butt here of the cell, and you can see from the side, that's about the length. Not, not unlike what you might see in a flashlight battery. This cell has a 3.3 volt rating, so it's a lower voltage than the lithium polymer pouch cell. It has a 2.5 amp hour capacity versus the five that we have over here. It has a continuous discharge rating of 70 amps, and it has a 10 second discharge rating of 120. Still pretty powerful, that's why it's still referred to as a power cell. So let's step through it again. 3.7, 3.3, 5 amp hours, 2.5 amp hours, can release 125 amps continuously, can release 70, can release 300 amps for 10 seconds, can release 120. So now you might say, well that's a weaker, smaller cell, how could you possibly hope to go even faster with that cell? And it's all about how they're configured and together in something we call their serial and their parallel configurations. 
That's the magic on how batteries can, can uh, be configured to release tremendous amounts of power. These cells that we got from Derek were in a 10P, which stands for parallel, 96S, which stands for serial configuration. Let's talk about parallel for a moment. You take two of these cells and you put them side by side and you put the positives to the positives and the negatives to the negatives. All you've really done is make one cell that has twice the power of the single cell. The voltage is the same, so it's still a 3.7 volt cell, but now it would release 600 amps instead of 300. So you look at your parallel when you look at how many amps can you discharge at one time, either continuously do it or for 10 seconds. So that's why your P is important. You're building up the amps, that's your power part, okay? Now, to get your voltages higher, which also contribute to the, capacity, uh, the output capabilities of a battery, you go positive to negative, positive to negative, and that's called serial. So, in the original battery for the Zombie 222, we had 10 of these cells in parallel. So that became essentially one big cell, 3.7 volt cell that could discharge 3,000 amps. We then took 96 of those groupings of 10 and put them positive to negative, positive to negative, building a 96S pack that had a nominal voltage of 355. So nominal voltage is the voltage that is uh, the rating of a cell or battery, and that is the typical voltage where the cell is the happiest. Okay, so these are 3.7 volt cells. When they are balanced charge, not overcharged or undercharged, they'll be at 3.7 volts. However, cells do have a safety range in which you can charge more, and, uh, and of course, as they begin to deplete, how low can you go before you damage the cell? So there's a high and a low side. These cells can charge up to a little bit over four volts safely, okay? The cells that are used here can charge up to 3.6 volts safely. Now, why is that important? When you look at a drivetrain of an EV, like a Zombie 222, you have to understand what are the voltage levels and amperage levels that the controller or the inverter can handle, because that is the neck of the pipe. You can't put more in there than it's willing to take, okay? We use Zilla 2K controllers on the Zombie 222, and those controllers uh, will not take more than 400 volts. So there's no point trying to give it more than 400 volts. Uh, so when we think about a fully charged racing battery, we take a look at the cells 3.7, and we think about how far that cell can be charged, and then you divide that out with your total rating of say 400 in this case, and you develop a nominal voltage for the whole pack that when fully charged is 400. And it turns out that with this particular chemistry, 3.7 volt chemistry, the nominal voltage is 355 volts. Then when you fully charge it, it'll be 400. But nominal is important because that, that 400 sounds great, but as soon as you floor the car and you take off, man, that, that little bit of overcharge disappears real quick. That's the first thing that gets used up. And then the cell will try to seek its equilibrium for as long as possible at its nominal voltage. So we like to look at the nominal voltage uh, more than the, uh, the absolute tip-top overcharge state that you can pack into the battery. So the nominal voltage for the original Zombie 22 battery was 355. These cells, since they have different voltage levels, turns out that the right nominal voltage for a battery pack made out of these cells is 369. They can't be overcharged as much as these cells, so when you think about 400 as being your limit, it turns out that 369 volts will charge up to 400, uh, but that's its nominal is 369, that's where it's going to be the happiest. We're going to charge, we're going to charge the old one to 400, and we're going to charge this one to 400. So you have to put enough cells in series to get to those nominal voltages to be able to, to charge up to the levels you'd like. It turns out with 3.7, that was 96 cells in module. And I'm sorry, in series. 96 cells in series to get to the 355 nominal voltage. It turns out with the A123 cells, it is 100. Uh, and 12, sorry, it's 112 of these cells in series that will put us at the 369. Now parallel, 
This battery had 10 and would put out 3,000 amps. Well, what's the point in building a new battery if you're not going to increase the actual power output of the battery? So we're going to be running these cells in a configuration of 32 in parallel, 112 in series. That means that the 10 second output capacity of this new battery made up of these modules is 3,840 amps and it's nominal voltage is 369. The old one was 3,000 at 355. So you can see significantly more power in this battery. Another way to think of it is when you take the total amps that it can discharge at one time uh, times its nominal voltage, uh, that's another way to look at the total watts power that you're putting out on this battery. And so we used to talk about the fact that the old zombie had a one megawatt battery, and it is. If you take 3,000 times 355, you'll see that's a smidgen over one megawatt. This battery at 3840 times 369 is 1.4 megawatts. So lots more power to play with here. These cells are already pre-configured into these modules. Some people call these cartridges, some call them sub-modules. Uh, we like this because since we're using a lot more of these smaller cylindrical cells, if we had to put every single cell together ourselves, that would just be lots of work. Like Derek had to put 960 of these cells together in this 10P96S configuration to build the old zombie battery. And we would need a total of 3,584 of these cells. That'd be lots to put together. But Voltavox has a 64 cell module or cartridge already built for us. And so our job is to then take 56 of these guys and put them into the different encasements that will fit in the car as our final battery. So we will have 56 of these cartridges or modules building up a complete battery. And in the past we had 960 of these cells building up a total battery. So this module is 1, 2, 3, 4 S in series and 16 in parallel. So this end of these 16 cells is probably all negative and the other side's all positive. So with two plates on the end, that's acting as one big cylindrical cell and then it will be positive to negative, positive to negative, blah, 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 stepping the voltages up. So we will end up with these cartridges being 2P of the cartridge, right? So we'll have 32 in parallel, think of connecting these two back plates, these two front plates, and then to step those up into series, we'll have for every two of these, we'll do a positive negative end over end, connecting them together to build up the series. And that's how we get these crazy, crazy power levels. Well, I hope I haven't bored you to tears, and I hope this has been somewhat informational and useful for you. Look forward to speaking with you in future videos.